You're listening to Dodge Movie Podcast. Your hosts are Christy and Mike Dodge, the founders of Dodge Media Productions. We produce films and podcasts, so this is a podcast about films. Join them as they share their passion for filmmaking. Welcome back, everybody, to the Dodge Movie Podcast. The 67th episode, we will be talking about Blue Crush, finishing out our month of Hawaiian movies. So for those of you who maybe be sporadic listeners, not Lee, not RJ, not Sandy. Let's see who I'm thinking Ernie. about. Ernie, not yeah. Ernie, not Stacy. But those of you who maybe missed, we were going to do five movies and we had to take a sick week. And so enjoy forgetting Sarah Marshall and we will chat with you as we meet you in person, but we will not be covering that one. We're going to instead go into Pride movies for June. So that's a little scheduling update. We watched this one on Apple for $3.99. We watched Blue Crush, if I haven't said it yet. The 2002 movie directed by John Stockwell, which I didn't know that he had become a director. But for all of you who grew up in the 80s, he portrayed Cougar in Top Gun and he directed Into the Blue. Now, Mike, remind everybody which character Cougar was. Cougar is the F-14 pilot who freaks out and isn't able to land. And so he loses his spot at Top Gun. And that's how Maverick and Goose get to go. Oh, my gosh. And hey, everybody, when this episode comes out, Top Gun is coming out. So what a great tie in. It is. And not to spoil it yet, but there is another Top Gun tie in in the writing of this film that we can talk about. OK, let's or well, that's a little tease, everybody. So listen up. Yeah, this is going to come out on Sunday, and I believe Top Gun will have come out the Friday previous. So we will be in the theater that Sunday. We're coming back from a trip, and we are going to make a point to go. I don't know. Are you going? You haven't decided yet? So here's the thing, is I got a thing from Regal today about pre-order your ticket. I'm like, it's uh, it's not pre-order a ticket for me. Right. Like, well, I'll go we see have... it, but I'm not going to stand in line for that Tom Cruise film. I'm sorry. No, we don't have to stand in line because we have the subscription. Y- yeah, but I'm also not going to order three weeks in advance just like to get a ticket. I'll, I'll get a seat when I get a seat. Okay, I'm going. That's well, I, just, I'm happy to go that I'm weekend. I'm a child of the 80s, right. and that song gets me going, and I don't want to miss it. That's one of those in the theater movies. When people say, Absolutely. will theaters ever go away? I go, no, because of movies like Top Gun. Well, I think it's going to probably be a lot like Transformers, the first movie that Michael Bay made, yeah. where it doesn't make a lick of sense, but what a ride. It's just the like visuals of all those yeah. those scenes of the fighter jets doing things they would never do they in actual never. combat Exactly, are going to look amazing. Exactly. I'm not going for the acting. Yeah. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> now, w- here's the thing. Yeah. And maybe... Our listeners can write in before they actually see the film. I'm curious, what sport did they replace volleyball with? Oh, I feel like we've seen it in the trailer. Oh, darn. Well, then, not that exciting a game then. Jeff, we have to stop for a second. Yeah, I feel like it's not volleyball. Oh, no. It'd be funny if it was pickleball. Oh, that would be hilarious. (laughs) Well, didn't they add in a lady pilot? So the topless part gets a little bit not so PG-13 if if they I'm trying to think because, okay, as soon as we turn this off, we are going to look it up. But they're millennials now, all the pilots, so it has to be ping pong, right? It's an outdoor sport. I can't believe I can't uh, think of it. Slack line, pickleball, something like that. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and by the way. Mad props to hair and makeup and costume design because Miles Teller looks exactly like Anthony Edwards' son. Yes, yes, that, he does. That lands Mad perfectly. props, yes. Yeah. Okay, we have spent five minutes talking about not the movie that we were supposed to be here talking about. But we're it's a, almost it, like Tig, it's a tie-in. Tig and Cheryl's true story where they don't well, even talk about the documentary that they're supposed to be talking about. I am definitely Tig in that duo. <laughs> By the way, if Tig would like to be on the show, she's welcome. Mm-hmm. Cheryl, too. I probably have a non-sexual crush on Tig, so it stands to reason that you would be the Tig. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think if I had hair, we I'd have similar hair. But I think Tig and I share a uh, complete ignorance of people who are popular and, and famous and stuff. And I can't pronounce people's names like Cheryl. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> so uh, I think this is a contest for our listeners. We need our own version of Snurkbull. Yes. What are our listeners called? Right. <gasps> 
Okay, new contest. Like, I want to set the stakes high. Oh, yeah. Uh, cash money? Yeah. Do we just give them 50 bucks? Yeah, yeah. Okay. To the winner. 50 bucks goes to whoever can come up with the best name for our fans. Right. Yep, All yep. three of you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're up to six now. <laughs> okay. All six of you get together, come up with a name. The one that gets the best name, and we'll either, if we get enough entries, we could do a poll, or no, I think, we will choose. Yeah, we choose. Okay. But we could get their input. We could see. Uh, I don't care about their input on this. <laughs> they get to come up with the ideas, but and I pick it. A, a poll is a great social media thing, oh. like social media content. Is this like one of those things where I gesticulate, and you say that's awesome for a podcast, <laughs> where I'm not thinking? Okay. Okay. We are so far off topic. <laughs> I like it though. <laughs> okay. Back to Blue Crush. Directed by John Stockwell. Stars Kate Bosworth, Michelle Rodriguez, Matthew Davis, Sano, Sane, Sano, S A N O E. See? <laughs> Cheryl Hines at work. <laughs> How do I say that name? Is it Hawaiian? Because it would oh. be Senaway. Okay. Let's say that. Sure. Mika Boomer. Chris Tallow and Phase on Love. I can say that yeah, one. Yeah. The producer is Brian Grazer. That was our notable crew member. The writer is Susan Orlean, who wrote mm. a magazine article called, called Surf Girls of Maui. And the screenplay was written by the director, John Stockwell. Nice. All right. Got through it. The synopsis for this film is As a hardcore surfer girl prepares for a big competition, she finds herself falling for a football player. That's from IMDb. And some of the taglines were, if you want to feel the rush, you have to take the risk. I like this tagline. Three friends, one passion, no limits. <laughs> oh, nice. That's such a classic. That's Hollywood. Yeah. And then the other one is, face your fears, live your dreams. And uh, not as good as three friends, one passion, no <laughs> limits. That's awesome. That's how they sold that film. That tagline right there. <laughs> Some trivia for the film. During the scene where the girls are on the beach checking the wave conditions, the man that comes out of the water with a bloody eye was an actual surfer who got hurt and the film crew just shot it and later obtained permission to use it, which you remembered. Yes. From the first time we saw it, I because guess. Because I love it. Credit to the film crew. Always be, be shooting. ABS. ABS. <laughs> <laughs> Another little bit of trivia. Uh, I guess I should have saved this for head trauma. Kate Bosworth was briefly knocked unconscious while filming one of the surf lessons. Matthew Davis tried pushing his surfboard vertically under the water and it slipped out of his hands and launched into the air and struck Kate on the top of the head. <laughs> she was taken to the local hospital as a precaution but suffered no permanent injury. Good job, Matthew Davis. And lastly... Michelle Rodriguez did all of her own jet ski stunts, including when she was towing Kate out to the biggest waves. Oh, Kate's stunt double out yeah. to the biggest waves. Okay, Mike, kick us off. What is the pickup line of this film? There's no way to know. <laughs> We're 10 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, uh, that was a call back to Tig, by the way, Tig. Yeah. But I wrote down, it's rad, but I actually have no clue. And we did go back many oh, times. Yeah, yeah. And I kept trying, but it's incoherent. I, uh, I, I don't know. There's no way to know. No way to know. All right. Well, there you go. That's the episode. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Back to okay. Top Gun 2020. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. I have a lot under cinematography. Awesome. Yeah. That, that, that's probably the most talk aboutable thing. Right. Conversation starter <laughs> in this film. <laughs> we're both doing well with the word. Yeah, we're loopy. This is hilarious. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can't go wrong filming in Hawaii. Right? Visually, But yeah. the opening scene, she's having a dream. It was a tough opening. I mean, it, it like throws... Talk about throwing you into the conflict. Right, right. Because she's... There's like some weird effects going on. They do this thing that almost makes people's skin iridescent. I'm sure there's a, a technical term for it <laughs> that I can't think of right now. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, I know what iridescent is, but I don't remember what you're talking about in the oh, film. Oh, shoot. I'm going to... Jeff, if you know what I'm talking about, our editor, Jeff, now we're just really breaking down the fourth wall. It's this, I'm sure that there's an effect may, or a LUT maybe that they put on and it makes people's skin, there. it's like sweaty and it reads as iridescent. Huh, curious. If Next time we see it, yep. I mean, I've seen it before right in now. other stuff. Right. Anyway, it's it's showing us that she had an accident 
that's kind of spooked her. Right. And this is the Top Gun tie-in. I made a note of before I found out that the director was in Top Gun. I said, the opening shots establish that she has trouble landing on a carrier, er, surfing the big waves after her big wow. white bow. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. It was very much... Yeah, you're right. The talking moment, like she had to go around again and again. Yeah. And she just couldn't get the hook. Yeah. Wow. So she's Maverick. <laughs> she is. She is. In 2002, that was much later. Well. Yeah, Top Gun Top Gun had 84. to be, yeah. Yeah, we should have just looked it up since we're talking about it so much. Yeah. The cinematography, though, and one of oh, the yeah. things that I noted is there was a couple times where you would see like they would be sitting on their surfboards, like straddling their surfboards. Right. And then they would cut to th- under the water. And so you would see the surfboards and the legs. Mm-hmm. And it kind of spooked me. Yeah, like, that was the shark shot. Yes. And I kept waiting for something like that to happen and nothing really happened. And I was just like, I guess cinematographers and directors need to be careful because now when you show an underwater shot, Right. We immediately think it's the POV of the shark. Thanks, Spielberg. <laughs> exactly. George Lucas. Yeah. Who? Which one did it? Both of them? I thought Spielberg directed that one. Oh, okay. I thought Lucas was involved somehow. But he no, probably I probably wrote it. Right. They were buddies. Okay. Speaking of writing, the opening scene, like you said, tells us about the main character. And I, put, I did a quote that well, as we were watching this, Mike said, so apparently surfers are assholes. <laughs> yeah. Now, I know one surfer that isn't because i went to film school with him and he's a sweetheart right so famously sunny boy garcia i think was a famous hawaiian surfer and he had that locals only very pugilistic approach not particularly welcoming of strangers i'm guessing not welcoming of women either but who knows yeah those guys that kind of were shutting out her football bow right. They very much gave me those same vibes from that reality show we watched that had Sunny in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's a tie-in. Remember how I said I wanted a tie-in back to Blue Hawaii? Yeah, yeah. Anne-Marie's last name was Chadwick, <gasps> which is a nod to Elvis Presley's character Chadwick Gates in there, Blue Hawaii. 19- there you so got it. We've gone all the way back They're around, you guys. I cannot believe we did it, and that was completely unintentional. We yeah. just picked four Hawaiian movies that I we like. I just want to tell the listeners that is not movie magic. We really didn't know that tie-in until right now. And it feels so gratifying. Yeah. If we went clean. <laughs> we, we did. <laughs> this episode is going to go down in history as the one where they lose their minds. <laughs> the, the, the last time we thought they were entertaining. Yeah. That's it. There go our six listeners. Okay. <laughs> Even before we got to name him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. So, trying to get serious, she tries to pull it back in control. I thought it was very pro- pro- prophetic. Prophetic. Okay. When, one, at one point, Amory, probably act end of, near the end of Act 2, she says, I'm tired of holding my breath. Oh, very good. And she that was- That works ta- in two different ways. Yes. Because she's trying to keep her sister on the straight and narrow. Mom, didn't mom die? Or did mom R-U-N-O-F-T? I believe mom passed away. Okay. And so she's trying to keep it all together. She's trying to pursue her career, but she had this accident. And so she's getting kind of spooked. She's trying to be a hotel maid when it's very difficult because tourists apparently are just disgusting. Right. <laughs> Separately, not, not as research for this film, but I, I did look up. And the times that the hotel maids are given to turn a room around, are really, really short. Very I, I don't think I could do it at it's, all. It's almost impossible. Yeah. So it's amazing. And then there's kind of, I guess you could say it's a bridge too far, except it's not a bridge. It's a condom. And that's kind of an interesting scene, which I don't know how realistic <laughs> that is. And somebody says you don't pay a lot of money to get confronted by a ma- or scolded by the maid. And I would think that that would probably be a career-ending maneuver as a maid to yeah. confront a guest on the beach. Which it was. She was fired. And then her friends said, well, fire her or you fire us. And I think that they would probably just fire them all. Yeah. And then at one point, her friend, friend, I use air quotes. Loosely. Yeah. She's trying to get her attention and she's trying to get her to kind of get out of her own way. And so she hits her with, 
like mother, like daughter. Ooh, that's dirty pool. That one stung. Yeah, I noticed that there's this commonality with Point Break, uh-huh. another fine film from the 80s. With surfing. Where the girl teaches the boy to surf. And then as soon as I said that, I'm like, of course, pretty girls can get guys to pay them to teach them all sorts of things, any sport they want. That makes sense to me that the rich quarterback would be like, oh, I want the pretty girl to teach me to surf. Not that guy over there that calls me bleep and howly and wants to punch me. Of course he's going to go with her. Right. (laughs) It ends up in this cinematic, just kind of like triumphant. She comes, she, we think she's going to get, you know, taken out by the tidal wave. And then she pops out the end of the pipeline. I think the cinematography in this was incredible. Mm -hmm. It was like at least half surf film, right? Absolutely. It was wonderful. So my guess is, I don't know, but my guess is they got the guys who do those actual surf films to do the in the water stuff. It was just too good for, uh, I think, a person who didn't have a lot of experience doing that. It was really well done. Absolutely. I think, I mean, I think in all of these, which... If anybody has not seen The 100 Foot Wave on HBO oh, Max, yeah. it's a fantastic documentary yep. about yep. these guys. And in that, I feel like they give us a tiny glimpse of the camera people Yep. because those camera people had to be kind of the best of the best because if they were going to be out there with this guy oh. trying to achieve this 100 foot wave, they too had to be skilled to be out there. So there are specific cinematographers that do surf movies and i think right. like those surf contests and stuff oh, like yeah. that it's just incredible it really, yeah that's great i will also tip of the cap to the director he likes a montage as much as i do <laughs> well in a surfing montage i mean that's just right well and they also have a montage of the surfer girls taking off clothes which is great for ratings so right tip of the cap which leads directly into i was just reading my notes and under costuming As they were wearing string bikinis during much of the action shots, all three actresses suffered wardrobe malfunctions during filming. Kate Bosworth told the Toronto Sun, I'm getting all of this from IMDb, by the way, that her bikini was ripped off at least a few times by the surf. Our man on the water safety team was happy to, was very (laughs) happy the whole shoot. When you're wiped out on a 10 foot wave, it's going to get ripped off you. It's just going to happen. So much so that by the end, I was just, everybody's seen it, (laughs) end quote. So my first bullet point under costumes is bikinis, bikinis, and more bikinis. (laughs) There you go. But my second bullet point is phase on in some budgie smugglers. That was awesome. Oh, I have a phase on entry uh, hula skirt and coconut bra. Oh, also nice. (laughs) You have to if you're going to have a a Hawaiian movie. You got (laughs) it. Don the hula and of skirt. course the comedian is the guy who puts on the, was, the coconut bra and the hula skirt. I was just gonna say, and who better than the chubby comedian? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, exactly. No accident there. So under sound, I have I really enjoyed kind of being reminded of "Cruel Summer" by Bananarama. Oh yes, one of my faves. I believe that was early in the film. Mm-hmm, I believe so too. Yes. So that was fun. Did I miss anything before we move on? I don't know much about surfing. Right. Uh I only know basically what I've seen in the movies and the documentaries. Okay. But my question I had was, there is a kind of plot point where her leash that connects her surfboard to her ankle so she doesn't lose a surfboard gets caught uh, on the coral. And my question is, how often does that really happen? Because it seems like if it happened at all, you would not do that (laughs) because it would be a substantial safety hazard. So... Again, I don't, the culture seems to be that surfers aren't very concerned about safety because up until recently, and I think, again, a nod to a hundred foot wave, they didn't wear helmets. And if you're going to get your noggin bumped on the coral, a helmet is maybe not a bad idea. Yeah, but you look like a dork. You do look like a dork, but you can still walk when you're 50. So (laughs) make your choice. You're right. You're right. Good point. All right. Speaking of that, was there any head trauma in this movie? There are numerous wipeouts, but the only one we actually see is Anne-Marie's wipeout in that opening sequence. Uh-huh. She bonks her head on the coral. Ouch. Yeah. How about a Smoochie? Does she have a love interest, the football player? Smoochie, Smoochie, Smoochie! She has a, a love interest, the football player. I do not have a listed Smoochie. But they may, they, we know they had sex. <laughs> okay, now I'm... Because, remember, 
she spends the night and Eden's really mad. And like they come to clean the room and she's been staying in it and he had bought her like a black dress and heels. And so they're like, oh, you're one of them now. And they're really, oh, okay. All right. she's eating waffles. So she's gone from being the maid to being the guest. A kept and, woman. And her friends are pissed. Okay. Yeah. I was having a little, little point break, you know, Lori Petty kind of merge thing there. So you're right. Okay. How about a driving review? I know she, she drives her sister to school. Right. So we have an interesting choice of that 61 Impala as a choice for the surf transport. I will mention Hawaii, as everyone knows, is an island next to an ocean. And so salt water particularly rusts out everything. And that Impala was in really good condition. It looked to me like they took a pretty nice Impala and painted one door with primer color just to make it look old. That car was in way too good condition to be a surf curls car, but it's a nice car. There's a Dodge Power Ram that the surf boys drive, which actually makes sense, right? Because you throw your surfboards in the back, in the truck bed. I will mention, based on her driving, that squealing tires are happy tires. But (laughs) I don't know how you could possibly fix the Impala's overheating by just adding more water to the radiator. Uh, I mean, that's not going to fix the problem. That might get you another three miles, but it's not going to fix the problem. Is it on brand, though, that those girls wouldn't that's what they how they would fix it. Well, you would do that to get to wherever you're going to work on it, but you got to fi- it's it, it's not fixing the problem, it's just treating the symptom. There's a scene there where the Impala pulls out to get next to the Land Cruiser, and I would believe that the V8 powered Impala could do that, but super dangerous, so that's a negative in the driving review. If you're going to pass on the left, complete the pass. Don't just linger. That's dangerous. But I do give them credit for when they go off the beaten path. And that's full sin in that Land Cruiser. That guy did not care about that rental Land Cruiser. He sent it bonkers. Not cool. Should we go to the numbers? Let's go to the numbers. Okay. I'm going to try to pull this across the finish Rain line. It in. <laughs> okay. You can land it, Maverick. <laughs> okay, thanks. All right. This film, like I said, came out in 2002. It had a budget of $30 million. I don't think they would necessarily call this like a windfall success. It, domestically, it did make 40. So at least they recouped their initial investment. And oh, worldwide, yeah. it made 51. But I think this is why we didn't see Blue Crush 2. <laughs> right. Because I don't think that the studio would call that like a winning success. Although, was there a direct to Skinamax version? There may have been. <laughs> it got a 5.7 out of 10 on IMDb. So, although... The critics liked it way more than 50 first dates, which is interesting. 62% and audiences, 58% said it was likable. It was an hour and 44 minutes. It was rated PG-13, so maybe more for your tween crowd. It was, it's labeled as a drama romance sport, and it's a Universal Pictures and Imagine Entertainment. So generally when Grazer and Howard get together, that's just a win automatically. But I guess, I guess Cougar choked again. (laughs) No, just kidding. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Stockwell. It did win the Golden Fleece Award. Okay, now I must know what is the Golden Fleece Award. Well, that's for you to look up. Oh, okay. (laughs) Jason and the Argonauts? Yeah. (laughs) Maybe they fleeced the (laughs) the investors. Oh, or was Ray Harryhausen in charge of the surfing montage? (laughs) I I don't know. I don't know. And it was filmed entirely, or no, not entirely, in Hawaii and in L.A. I'm sure there was some on the soundstage. Right. Okay. We better wrap it up. We need to go eat dinner, and you guys need to go find a better podcast. No, just- Oh, hey, stop that. Just kidding. (laughs) This is one of our classic episodes. (laughs) Come back next week when we will be talking about Pride movies. I will post on our social media the four movies that we picked for the month of June. This wraps up our Hawaii month. We hope that you all had a great month listening to some of our podcasts and just kind of getting that aloha spirit. You know you are all part of our ohana and never forget. Dodges never stop and neither do the movies. Thanks for listening to Dodge Movie Podcast with Christy and Mike Dodge of Dodge Media Productions. To find out more about this podcast and what we do, go to dodgemediaproductions.com. Subscribe, share, Leave a comment and tell us what we should watch next. Dodges never stop, and neither do the movies. 